So, welcome back. Um, I would like to have a look at um, lengthenings and shortenings of vowels. Okay, before 1500, that means before the great vowel shift. Yeah? We talk in reverse chronology and it makes perfect sense that we go now beyond uh, the great vowel shift further back in time. Why do we do that? Uh, but first of all, a few preliminary remarks. Yeah? We established that before, that vowels are characterized according to two categories, yeah? two categories, quality and quantity. Yeah? Quality means where is your tongue in your mouth, so is it e or u, and you see your tongue is moving, which means those two have different qualities. Quantity means long or short, yeah? and please don't forget that long also means diphthong. Yeah? So, a long vowel is either a long monothong or a diphthong. And most diphthongs, of course, are, historically speaking, or once were, long monothongs. Okay, um, so, and um, having established that, uh, vowels change according to these two categories, yeah? which means they may change their quality over time, tongue position, or they may change their quantity. Uh, long vowels becoming short, short vowels becoming long, something like that. We had, we talked about the great vowel shift. The great vowel shift is a qualitative change because only long vowels and diphthongs were affected. Okay, uh, the tongue position changed. Okay, so e becoming e, and there you see the tongue is of course uh, moving upwards. So yes, um, so the great vowel shift is a qualitative change. All right. Um, a vowel's quantity, uh, apostrophe is missing, but never mind. A vowel's quantity before yeah, 1500, and this is when the great vowel shift started, yeah, 1550, something like this, decides whether it is affected by the great vowel shift or not. And that's the important thing. Yeah? So, um, is a vowel long? It goes into the great vowel shift. Is it short? Yeah? It stays out of it. And um, so this may explain to us, yeah, this fact, uh, things like that, yeah, child and children. There you see the singular uh, was a long vowel, child. This went into the great vowel shift and became child. The plural was short, children, something like that. And therefore, no great vowel shift, and therefore you have to take child and children. We'll have a detailed look at that. I just wanted to show you how important it is whether a vowel is long or short before the great vowel shift, uh, or uh, whether it is lengthened or shortened. Okay, um, I, I would like to, the first, first quantitative change I would like to talk about in detail is the lengthening in the ninth century, which I, which I called L9. Yeah? L9 means lengthening in the ninth, ninth century. And um, the rule here sounds rather complicated, but you will see it isn't. Yeah? Short vowels are lengthened before liquid or nasal. Liquid is l, yeah? r, or n, n. Yeah? N, yeah? So nasal, n, 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 and liquid is l and r, okay? Plus homogenic voiced plosive. This sounds complicated. No, it isn't. I mean, so you have, take a nasal, yeah, any nasal, mm. So what is the homogenic voiced plosive? It's d, because they are produced in the same position of your mouth, yeah? Same tongue position, mm, d, mm, d, mm, d, is homogenic, yeah? So it's m, b, m, b, homogenic, because m and b are pronounced the same way, okay? And by the way, so it's lulled, lulled, because lull is alveolar, yeah, at least the tongue tip, yeah, touches your alveolar, and then lulled, 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 okay. Um, uh, 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 very, very easy, very easy. And then uh, the next one, ng, is as well, okay, and then r and any voiced sound, yeah, consonant, yeah, after that. So, rl, yeah, rl, rn, rz, rz, okay, something like that. So, Mb, nd, ng, ld, rd, l, r, r, n, rz, rz. Okay, these are the clusters. And before that, short vowels are lengthened. Okay. Why? Um, uh, uh, good question. Why? I mean, take a word like hund, hund, yeah, short, hund. 
So this would be nd, yeah, homogenic consonant, and this becomes hund. Now this nd, yeah, these homogenic sounds, mb, yeah, they 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 melt, you see, and therefore they are over in in, in a split of a second. Yeah, mb, mb, ng, 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 ld, yeah, and in order to gain articulation time. This is what we call it. Yeah? Gaining articulation time. You lengthen. Hund. Yeah? And you will be probably better understood. Yeah? So hund is much easier to be understood of, yeah? than hund, yeah? which is over in there. Just like that. Uh, this may be the driving force behind that. Yeah, Articulation time and, of course, being better had. Probably if you talk uh, um, uh, across great distances, something like that. Okay. Um, no lengthening when a third consonant follows. <laughs> and we will see why that is important. Okay. Uh, here is an example. Okay. Uh, Old English finden, short. Yeah? Finden, as in German. We still have the word in German, finden. Yeah? Finden in German, finden. Same, same thing in Old English. Then you see nd, homogenic consonant cluster, which means L9 applies, and therefore findan, yeah? findan becomes something like finden, finden in late Old English, and then in Middle English, fiend, or something like this. And this fiend goes into the red vowel shift and becomes, first of all, in early modern English, feigned. This would be Shakespeare, okay, and then in modern English, find. This is our contemporary pronunciation, okay? That's all there is, yeah, basically. Um, another one, yeah, klim, klim, klimban, yeah, klimban, old English short, yeah, klimban, both still pronounced, klimban, okay? Then you see mb, old English, klimben, late old English, middle English, klimbe, and because it's long now, great vowel shift, yeah, claim, and later climb and ber is lost somewhere on the way. Okay. In German we still have the word klimmen. No? Still have it still short in German. Okay. Um, and uh, here you have some of these words and I, I find it very useful. I mean to compare this to contemporary German because contemporary German is a lot more conservative as far as as far as the vowels are concerned, yeah? Ah, please, I don't say that English derives from German. It doesn't. No, they have a common ancestor, yeah? Something like a low German dialect of, I don't know, the fifth century, something like that, yeah? A low German dialect. Okay, this could be, yeah, um, 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 this sort of low German yeah? um, is still very kindred to uh, both. Uh, languages today. But, uh, uh, probably more, more to German. But, uh, 500 years ago, 1500 years ago, uh, probably even a thousand years ago, they still were mutually intelligible. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so you have field and felt. Yeah? So this word was once felt, felt, short in Old English, felt as in German. But same word, felt, felt. Felt, felt. And then L9 applies. Felt becomes field. And this grows into the great vowel shift and becomes field. German still felt. Okay. And there you see how, um, how much it can help you to have a look at contemporary German. I just want to say that um, more and more um, linguists these days um, talk about historical phonology without having a word of German. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, people like, I don't know, David Crystal talking about yeah, the development of English words and so on only coming through French. I mean, please, the French influence on English phonology is zero. Zero. Well, of course, our English vocabulary is extensive, of course, yes. Phonology, zero. Yeah. It's, it's much easier to risk a sight glance at German. It does. Or Dutch. Yeah. Dutch would be Welt, by the way. Welt yeah. in Dutch. Yeah. Welt, the same word. Yeah. Dutch. Yeah. You may just as well take Dutch. Of course you may. Okay. 
Uh, so, uh, Hund, yeah? It was Hund as in German once, and then became Hund, and then Great Vowel Shift Hound, yeah? Same Grund, yeah? L9, Grund, ground German, still Grund, okay? Um, bind, yeah? It was Binden once, Binden, Old English, yeah? Binden, and then became Binden, and then Great Vowel Shift Bind and Bind. Okay, sound the same thing. Sund, German still we have this. Gesund, it used to be isund once. Yeah? In Old English, isund, isund, and then sound. Okay, gesund, healthy. Yeah, Help. that word. Okay, um, a, a, a few more. Yeah, um, mild. Yeah? German, mild, mild. Old English, mild, same thing. Mild, 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 great vowel shift. Cold, ja, cold, cold, kalt, gold, ja, gold, gold, ja, German, gold, gold. Schulter, shoulder, okay, halten, hold, or shield, and shield, long. Um, there you see, uh, it's a very regular, and uh, very regular, so um, L9 is important, and it's one of the major differences between contemporary German and English. They have L9, Germans don't. If you reverse L9, the great vowel shift in L9, you are very much mutually intelligible. Okay, well, you can do that. Well, works, yes. Uh, exceptions to L9, briefly, yeah, consonant clusters, and we talked about this. So, tilt, yeah, was long, and the plural tildru is uh, short, and tildru was short as well. But, and here we go, that's the crux, yeah? Since tildru is a consonant cluster, it wasn't lengthened. Yeah? Three consonant, no L9. Tildru, it remained short, but the singular tilt became child, and then child and child, okay? The, uh, uh, the plural, uh, tildru, tildre, children, okay? remained short, okay? So the reason why we have child and children is the singular was affected by L9, the plural wasn't because of consonant cluster. This is uh, what you may explain to your pupils, okay? Um, uh, more examples, yeah, here. Huh? You have um, Hund becoming Hund, huh? German today, Hund, huh? then Hound later on. But what about hundred? Why isn't it Hundred today. It's not hundred. It's hundred. Okay. German. Hundred. No, German still short. Here, here as well because da, three consonants. Ndr, yeah? No L9. Uh, therefore, still hundred. Yeah? Not hundred. Or um, uh, words in unstressed position. Okay. They are not affected by L9 as well. And this would be two examples here. And, and under okay and and under no l9 because i mean these are yeah they are conjunctions uh, preposition right and uh, they are adverbial yeah? okay, whatever. Uh, 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 they are yeah, not affected by l9 because they are in unstressed position in a sense, sentence. Okay, here we go. Um, I, I, I would like to uh, stop here because before I come to the next great uh, um, quantitative change. What have we learned so far? Yes, um, quantitative changes are important because they decide yeah, whether a word will go to the great vowel shift or not. And therefore, some incongruences may be explained that some part of the word probably goes, some other not, and something like this. And... I can only say that it explains uh, a major um, difference between the vowel sounds in contemporary German and English, two languages which have a common ancestor. Okay, I don't say that English derives from German. No, no. it's just the gorilla and the chimpanzee. Okay, common ancestor. Here we go. Yeah. Okay, let's stop here.